Good afternoon YouTube, KF7IJZ here. Uh, just got back from HRO where I picked up the new ICOM IC7100. Um, these have only been available on the market now for about a week and uh, I was lucky that our local store had some in stock. Uh, this is the highly anticipated, um, basically uh, all band, all mode, um, 160 through 440 minus 220. Um, but this is kind of the spiritual successor to the IC7000. Um, the big two features about this radio is that number one, this radio has D-Star built into it and is capable of doing full bandwidth D-Star on HF. Uh, number two, this radio also includes a touchscreen. Um, so it's kind of a radical departure from ICOM's previous designs. And uh, I just wanted to do a quick unboxing video. I uh, just got home and kind of excited to see what's included. So, without further ado. The, uh, the box, I think you got a decent idea of its size. But starting off, we have a CD-ROM, which I've already seen. There are two versions of the instruction manual online. There's the quote-unquote introductory version and then the advanced. Um, this thing is a money-saving piece. I'm sure these are cheaper to make than printing a manual. Uh, kind of disappointing because uh, the books are nice. But this is, I've, a lot of radios are doing this, this you know today, so not too big a surprise. Uh, we have a statement of the warranty and a way to record your date of purchase, etc. Uh, we have what I assume is the warranty registration card. Some states requ don't require that you send this in. You have, uh, again, the instruction manual, which online this is called, I think, like the quick start guide. And uh, it only is... Well, that's not very helpful. Um, it's, not, it's not very thick. Um, give you an idea that... Uh, yeah, it's not that thick of a manual. Uh, continuing in the box, we have uh, traditionally our ICOM power cable. Now, this cable was um, probably the biggest weak point of the IC7000 because it was a well-known fact uh, that the fuse holders used in the IC7000 cable were not self-cleaning and uh, corrosion would build up on the fuses, which basically turn them into resistors and you would find um, your power output dropping. But one thing I'm encouraged to see just right off the bat, these fuse holders are much different from um, the kind that came with the 7000. Let me try to get that open. And I'm happy to report, um, let's see if you can see I'm happy to report uh, that I believe these are just about the same as the self-cleaning ones. Now, self-cleaning because there's so much friction to put it back in, but these are the automotive style um, fuses, fuse holders, which is different than what came in the last one. So that's uh, that's nice to, to see on there. I probably won't actually be using this cable because it is incredibly long. Um, I'm guessing it's 12 gauge. I don't think that's 10, um, but honestly, I don't know don't have a way of measuring it either. But, so there's the power cable. Next in the box, uh, we have what looks like the head separation cable. So this is a standard RJ45 cable, but if you'll notice, see if the camera will focus, see the shininess on the RJ45 plugs in there? It's shielded. Uh, so that is definitely interesting. I also off the bat, I don't really see any, yeah, I don't see any toroids um, on there for suppre RF suppression. Next, and this is another exciting feature, is included uh, a USB cable, and it's USB mini. I don't know if you can really see that. A USB mini connector um, for hooking the radio up to your computer, and of course, what's exciting is this radio that connector, I believe, pretty much does everything. It does uh, programming, it does um, digital audio in and out of the radio, it does uh, control, and uh, for, I think you can even do um, digital, uh, or DV, or DD, uh, the slow speed data for D-Star. Um, that last one I'm making up, but 
I, I think you can, but that's still very cool that they include the USB cable. Um, okay, that's it for that section. Next, in what I assume will be the general accessories box, we have, get this open, okay. Now we get to start talking about one of the things that irks me, that's cardboard spacer of some kind. Um, we have in here the ICOM accessory plug, which I don't know if you can see all the pins. It's uh, a 13 pin cable. The pinouts are recorded in the, in the manual. You also get extra fuses for the radio. Um, you do get a suppression choke, so maybe that actually goes on one of the other cables we've looked at. And then there's an adapter um, to what I'm assuming that's 8th inch uh, tip ring sleeve. Not really sure what that's for. Next in the box, we have, ooh, the actual head unit. So, I do want to say one thing about this, because before I picked this up today, I spent quite a bit of time at HRO playing with it. Um, I, I feel like the production version of this actually felt more solid. I felt like it felt higher quality than the version that uh, was a Dayton and being passed around before then. The touchscreen, um, you know, of course we're all kind of, or maybe not sad, but it's a little disappointing that in 2013 we're still doing resistive touch displays when capacitive touchscreens have been out now for, you know, um, regularly available for over six years. But uh, I will say that this didn't feel as cheap as the, the demo models I had felt. Um, one thing that uh, the manager at my local HRO uh, is correct in wondering aloud is that, you know, this is a mobile rig and it's a capacitive, or I'm sorry, a resistive touchscreen. What will leaving this out in your car um, during the summer do? I mean, right now in Virginia, here for the last week, it's been in the upper 90s with heat indexes well over 110. Um, so I'm not sure what that would do. My, my intention for this radio is uh, more base use and not to be installed in the vehicle anytime soon. But uh, still, that's, that's the head. Again, you have uh, some buttons. And I'll probably do an in-depth review later and I'll go over all that. You've got a knob, which uh, there is a way of adjusting the friction. Right now it's set step. And then I can set it on... Uh, drag and then I can release the friction altogether. You've also got your uh, volume squelch knobs and then you've got uh, these serve for the uh, the passband tuning as well as the the clarifier or the red control. Um, connections in the back just that real quick. Head unit microphone, key, speaker out. On the bottom I assume this is the standard um, input that was on some of the other head units they've had um, and that may even be compatible with the tripod I don't know for sure there is a switch here to what I assume is probably impedance matching um, it goes between speaker and headphones for that audio port out on the back uh, like I said I don't know which one would actually be uh, I don't I'm assuming it's impedance but I don't know and then as they pointed out you've got your slip out feet which you have two settings to keep this from tilting back um, which again playing with it today was was very nice nothing on the sides but uh, definitely uh, a very cool head unit and then the last thing in this box which is in my opinion the biggest disappointment of the whole radio especially at the price point is You'll notice that this is not the 151 mic that came with the 7000. There's the only buttons on here are push to talk and up and down. This is um this is a mic that they sell that I actually uh, use with my Icom uh, ID880 because I feel like the audio out of it was just ever so slightly better than the the stock button mic that came with it. Um, the thing that's frustrating is if you want the full button mic. Um, the 151 and you want to buy it from ICOM, they're going to charge you $100 for that privilege. And um, ultimately, this radio, over the 7000 you are paying a $500 premium to have a touchscreen and D-Star, um, but you're losing a $100 microphone. And I think this thing, if you buy it by itself, is about 80 but still, um, maybe 70 But still, I'm just, that's very disappointing, ICOM. 
um, you know, the, the push to talk doesn't feel as good as they did 10 years ago. I mean, we all know the, the common complaints of these microphones, but so be it. At the end of the day, it'll still let you talk. Okay, and finally, um, getting to the main part of the radio. Remove this nice, thick piece of cardboard. And we have the radio body itself in the bag. Now, here we see all the, the connections and such on the back, and uh, there's a lot of them. Again, there's the, the USB port, uh, your HF and VHF UHF connections, your tuner connection, power connection, head unit, accessory. Um, this is the data jack similar to what's on the back of the 880. This is your packet jack. One of these is going to be for a speaker and I think that's a key and now that's your key. This says remote um, so I'm not actually sure what that does. But again the most interesting thing about this is on the front we have an SD card slot and this is important because um, this SD card slot is useful with all the, the D-Star functionality and quite frankly um, this radio is basically a mobile version of a similar functionality with the ID51 and the way it approaches D-Star with the menus, the preloaded repeaters, the preloaded um, reflector commands um, and this radio can also be hooked up to a GPS to find D-Star repeaters near you. Um, so yeah, I look forward to getting it hooked up and start playing with it, and I will do an in-depth review here in the near future. Uh, thanks for watching.